So let's go back to, you know, that first year where you're, you've relearned the mathematics. Um, presumably at some point you say, I want to look in nature and see where mathematics has already come up with an elegant way to describe a similar problem. Is that what led you to the study of predator prey models? Yeah, it just the um, uh, eco evolutionary dynamics in general. Um, and and because it's very appealing because of course they're living systems. You know, the, the ecology of, of uh, you know, swamps and that sort of thing is very complicated. And yet they can more or less master these, these, these complex relationships. And so that was appealing to me. Um, it was also appealing to me because, you know, when you work in a cancer center, um, the, the, uh, the cancer almost takes on a, a persona, a, a, like an evil entity kind of thing, almost magical in its ability to, uh, to overcome anything that the physicians do. And, and, and if you talk to oncologists, many of them will, will you know, have that. They, they may not say it, but they have that kind of sense of it. And to me, just saying that cancers have to obey Darwinian laws, that they're not magic, they're not unfathomable. They, they simply are really good evolutionary machines. And we can, ma we can, we can master this. We, we, we understand evolution and, and we can get on top of this. This is, this, you know, it's not, it's not something that we cannot understand because before that it just felt like we have no basis to, to understand this. It, it just happens and we do this and it, this happens. And so this, to, to me, gave it some deterministic quality, some some cause effect uh, relationships that I, that at least to me were comforting. Like I, y yeah, we could we could deal with this. So explain to folks how the standard, relatively simple predator prey models work. So um, the, the swamp is too complicated because you yeah. might have multiple predators yeah. and multiple prey. But let's start with first order differential equations, second order differential equations where you've got one, you know, you've got an isolated ecosystem where you've got foxes and hares. How does that sure. dynamic work? Uh, well, the, you know, the hares uh, essentially turn, uh, convert um, local vegetation to babies, uh, to baby hares. And so they reproduce. The foxes or whatever the predator is going to eat the, the, uh, the, the rabbits, um, and of course, so then you get these these population rises and falls because uh, if the um, if the predator eats too many of the of the prey, then its population will tend to decline. Its its population declines, the predator population expands, and so you can see these this cycling effect that goes on for prolonged periods of time, and. There at least are some data that have suggested that this is the case, but as with everything that's that's living, it's it's always more complicated than that. There's always various factors that that's come into play, but at least that was really, I think, probably if probably the first of uh, really kind of recognized uh, population models that began to be applied to nature, um, and so uh, to, it's kind of it's interesting to see that and predator prey models. Are still are, are things that we use a little bit, like for the immune system, where the, the immune system is kind of a predator, and the and it's chasing after the the cancer cells. Um, but of course, there's 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 important differences in that. The the uh, predator eats the prey and gains you know substrate from that, whereas in in the pre, in the immune system, it kills the the, the cancer cells, but it, it loses substrate, doesn't eat them up. And in fact, if anything, if anybody's eating anything, it's probably the cancer cells are, are swooping up, uh, you know, elements of their brethren that, you know, the macromolecules that they're are getting spilled into the environment. So, so there's, it, it, again, it's an, one of those things that's an appealing model, the predator prey model in, in, in immunotherapy. And yet there are important distinctions that you have to recognize that, that make the biology different and in some ways can give advantages to the prey that you don't really expect. So when you move on to a more complicated system like the swamp, right, where mm -hmm. you've got, you know, you've got everything from algae to bacteria to 
you know, small fish. And then you have to deal with how much sunlight is coming in and what's the temperature. I mean, now it starts to look a little bit more like the human body where why is there an algal, you know, bloom here mm -hmm. that basically consumes all of the oxygen and rapidly kills all the fish mm -hmm. versus a system that can be somewhat in a sustained setting where you never fully get rid of the algae, but the fish can live and there's yeah. kind of a, a beautiful chain of carbon fixation that goes from algae to fish. Um, yeah. So to me, like, how did you get to the point where you could look at that and say, we can now model this for human cancer, given that this is far more likely uh, how it behaves? Um, again, it's, you know, simplifying. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, you know, the best we can do is sort of a cartoon. And it's interesting to, th to think about why. I mean, ecologists uh, that are looking at a new ecosystem will begin by asking a very simple question. What's the birth rate and death rate of each species that's present? We don't know that in the cancer. I mean, it, astonishingly enough, that's not data that we get. Um, what's the carbon cycle? What's the iron cycle? What's the you know, nitrogen? What are all these cycles? How can we can we watch these substrate pass through individuals and, and how does that work? We, we don't get that. So one of the uh, problems that, that and so we call just kind of turn pale when, we, when they start asking these questions and realize that we have, that, that, that cancer biologists have never thought in those terms. I mean, something as simple as what is the, what is the birth rate and the death rate of the cancer population? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's astonishing to me that we, we don't know that. that, that and um, you know things like that. That we, we, you know, what's the growth rate of the tumor? What what are we kind of dealing with it, even in a first order kind of uh, estimate? Um, we 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 often don't do. Um, and it's kind of astounding to me it, it, that that uh, we have we do things very crudely in, in, in my in my opinion. In Canada, we don't we you know the evolutionary biologists and ecologists are you know take a far more sophisticated view. Of these of these interactions than we do, even to the point. An interesting fact is that if you were a pesticide manufacturer, you are required by law to submit a, uh, a a resistance management plan. You have to identify how pests become resistant to your. You know what are the mechanisms of resistance, and how do I plan to prevent that from occurring? We, you can you can introduce cancer drugs. I mean, well, cancer drugs are routinely um, uh, approved without any knowledge uh, of what the resistance mechanism is, much less how you're going to manage that in a patient. Um, so again, this this odd kind of disconnect that, um, in, in some ways, I think the ecologists, evolutionary biologists, have have pushed ahead. Of us, and we're just still trying to catch up with them in terms of, of understanding, of taking their sophisticated models and, and, and applying them to, to cancer. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit Peter Atia, MD dot com forward slash about where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.